Oh, oh my, my god, god hey. hey! It's you! No, no. Oh. I'm David Hunter. And I'm Joanna Woodward. And we'll be starring in The Time Traveller's Wife. Which is coming to the Apollo Theatre West End. We open on the 7th of October and press night is the 1st of November. Well done. Did I get all the dates right? Nailed it. Be yeah. there. Be there. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Mickey, Mickey Joe, Joe Theatre. Theater. That got a bit M&S. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This isn't just theatre. This, this is, is Mickey, Mickey Joe, Joe Theatre. Theater. Oh my god, hey! Hello! Thank you so much to David and Joanna from The Time Traveller's Wife for maybe the best introduction that one of these videos has ever had. That was amazing. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Mickey Jo. And I am Erin Jeans. And this is Oh My God Hey, the weekly vlog series following our theatrical adventures. Yeah. Yep, I am a professional theatre critic and content creator. Aaron works in theatre PR, and we get to go and see shows all the time in yep. the West End and also in other places. This week, the vlog has been introduced by the cast of the upcoming West End musical, The Time Traveller's Wife, because I very recently got to go to a very exciting launch event for the show at Ronnie Scott's in London. Check out what happened. <laughs> oh my God, hey. <laughs> uh, We've made it. We are in London amidst some train challenges. Rail challenges today. Not even strikes, just like reduced service and train cancellation. It's, it doesn't matter to you. You don't care. The point is, um, I'm moving very soon. And the one thing I was sad about was that where I'm moving to doesn't have as many different train lines that all go to London. And today has made me feel really good about yeah. that because I'm just like... I no longer miss, I'm not, I'm not going to miss these trains, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but Sean and I have made it into London, woohoo! Aaron Woo. is already here because he's been all over the country this morning, Yeah. Uh, meeting with one of the theatres that he works for, that he's recently started working for because he's so good at his job <laughs> doing their PR, um, and we've headed in to meet him at a launch event for a new musical, uh, Time Traveller's Wife. Um, we're here for the launch event of The Time Traveller's Wife. We're going to Ronnie Scott's. I haven't been to Ronnie Scott's. I've never been there. No, I think it's quite fancy. I'm wearing jeans, but like, it's a nice jean. It's a nice jean. I'm wearing a nice jean and a blazer. Um, so, I think we should be fine. Uh, but some of the cast are going to be here. A lot of other news and blogger and influencer types, I am imagining. And yeah, I think there's going to be some performances. I think I'm going to get to chat to um, the cast, also the writers, who are no big deal, but Josh Stone and Dave Stewart. So, of the Eurythmics for you youngins. There you go, Dave Stewart <laughs> of the Eurythmics. Sweet dreams are in fact made of this. <laughs> but we have been, uh, and we've had, we've been working. We've been doing things today. We also could have left earlier, but I was like, we'll be fine. And then the train got canceled. I said, it feels like we've run here, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Ironically, what would have been very useful would have been the ability to time travel. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought you'd all be very intrigued about this show, as I am. And the first thing I wanted to ask the cast and the creatives that I got to meet was what they thought audiences might take away from this show and how it might affect people. Uh, I want them to feel filled with the love. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. I'm being serious. I get very passionate about this. I hope they'll come and love reconnecting with the characters that they fell in love with when they read the book. Oh, I hope that it takes them through all the emotions that this wonderful experience has taken me through. I cry every show, legit, and Tim is like, are you crying again? And I'm like, no. Every time. But literally every, every show. Time. All of the heartache and the tragedy that everybody goes through in a lifetime. Now, a lot of it's about the power of love winning over all of these obstacles, you know? Ultimately, we all share love and share time with each other and family and love is what's important. You know and I know that life doesn't end when we go.
A lot of the things that people might think, oh, because it's time traveling, it's immediately yeah. disintegrate when they watch it because yeah. oh, they realize, oh, this is like any relationship. It's like this show's all about closure, right? It's like you're processing. Do you yeah, know you, you get... process it and you also revisit. Yeah. And then, but then you're then then you're assisted by the music. Like Dave's been saying, it's a really human story. Yes, there is time travel, but it's a human story. You know, this is a very strong, very kind of powerful artistic woman that keeps getting left to the wayside and she has to find her way through that. I think it breaks your heart and puts it back together again. Yeah. So I hope people feel like they leave feeling uplifted um, but also reflecting on all those people that are most important to them in life, you know. I think that's important. We should yeah. do that all the time, right? We should. Mm. Do you? No. It will just huh, take your heart and like squeeze it a little bit, you know. I hope people feel that when they hear the songs that we've kind of put in those moments. Because that's what music does. That's what it does for me. It's always done that for me. And on top of all of that, um, I hope they really enjoy these wonderful new songs by Dave Stewart and Just Name. It was so great getting to chat with the cast and creative team for this show and getting to see seven different songs performed. Like, this never normally happens. Not that much. At launch events for them to give us seven songs from the score. It's very exciting. And while I was editing this video, um, and this was a little while ago now that we went to this, I found that the songs were right back in my head. Yeah. And literally have have made their way into my brain so i'm very excited to hear them within the context of the show now i also like to ask a slightly silly question at these things and i wanted to know from the cast members and creative team of the time traveler's wife if they could wake up tomorrow in any year what would it be i wouldn't go future because i wouldn't want to know yeah. anything that i don't want to know and so i would probably go i think go on because my parents just chatted so much about the 80s uh, i reckon i go 80s just because i think it yeah. i think it's fun and i think if i was meant to be born in an era it probably was the 80s 1996 was the greatest year on go this on. planet it will never be surpassed it might be 97, but in, in and around that time, but you had like you get it right. on the radio, you had Jurassic oh, Park no. in the theatres, mm. you had Burnley being moderately successful as a football club, mm. which means a lot to me. I think I would go, but my age now, time travelling back to then, 2000s, like nice. Britney era, you know, NSYNC. Justin Timberlake, yeah, yeah. NSYNC, these little mics that, you know. Oh, baby, baby. Exactly. The outfits, the vibes. Yeah. The, it just felt like Tamagotchis. A yeah. If you look up the films that like The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, there's brilliant films. You know you films. were alive in that. That's time. what I'm saying. It's amazing. You want to go back? Okay. And you've got CDs. You don't have the internet. Just kind of just stand spark up. But you don't have to worry about it. It's just a lovely place to be. You can go out and play on your bike. <laughs> I can't remember which year it was, like 82 perhaps, when I was uh, my, the very first school show I did. It must be Alice in Wonderland, I played the Frog Prince. I was wearing tights, it was, I had to jump around the room. It was all too much, I started crying. And I'd quite like to go back in time and revisit that with renewed strength and confidence that I can do this. That's what I'd like to do. <laughs> it were the good old days, I'm telling you. While Dave's was, out riding his bike. I had, I had my um, I had my Tony Walkman, you know, with Anti Skip on it. It's gorgeous. I had a nice album. There was Power Rangers was on the telly. I would go to like a dive bar in America and watch someone like Etta James sing. I'm gonna stick with Etta James because she's sort my of year favorite. Is that then? Well it was a year of yesteryear. <laughs> um, ah, the sixties. Yesteryear. <laughs> <laughs> the 60s, yeah, late 60s, yeah. It's a good shout. I want to hear someone amazing sing instead of him. I hear him every day. <laughs> yeah. Rip me apart, shoot me straight through the dark. I'm a me, babe. Touch me about, flip me inside and down. Take me over. Rip me apart, shoot me straight through the dark. I'm a journey, babe. Yeah, 
I know I never get to be the time traveller. So yeah, that's it. That was fun for a moment. Stay in your lane. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to The Time Traveler's Wife for introducing this week's vlog. Make sure you get your tickets. The show is opening later this year in the West End, and I'm very excited to see it. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of this week's Oh My God Hey! Oh my god, hey! Hello. We're in Oxford right now, we are. Uh, but that's not really where uh, much of this part of the video is going to take place. Oh. I just thought it was novel that we were here. We have been attending Beam. Beam 2023, uh, which is a showcase of new musicals and a conference all about new musical theatre with um, little previews of musicals in various stages of development as well as producer-led panels and talks and I was on one of those panels talking about cultivating new musical theatre audiences which was a lot of fun uh, but this is all in another video uh, that may already be on my channel or maybe coming to my channel soon. Who knows? Who knows what time is? Because we've just had to duck out to head down to London. We are going to motor on down to London via train to go and see the press night performance of Aspects of Love, the new revival of the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical at the Lyric Theatre. So come with us on the train down to London to go see Aspects of Love. Okay, one overly warm and sleepy train journey down to London later and Leon. Uh, we have arrived on Shaftesbury Avenue with some theatre pals. Ellie Talks Theatre is also coming to see Aspects of Love and Sean is not because he hates love. I'm joking, he saw it the other day. Um, as you saw in Oh My God Hate. So here we are and here it is. <laughs> Here it is, Aspects of Love at the Lyric Theatre. There you can see it's Quartet of Central Stars. I think we've got a pink carpet going on. We have some photographers. Busy old press night. Oh yeah, it is a pink carpet. I see glimpses. I see glimpses. And if you go that way, you can see. <laughs> and that way is 222, which was there and is now there. And it's just confusing me every time. Next, it will be playing at Wasabi. <laughs> So we are in the queue to go into press night of Aspects of Love. We have some cast pictures out front. Look at that, everyone looking very glamorous. And it is in fact a red carpet. There you go, which is good because I am wearing red. And as we've learned from Bad Cinderella, red don't go with pink. Well, we're sat in B11 and 12 of the dress circle, but currently there's not an awful lot to look at as we stare into the black void of the Lyric Theatre stage awaiting the beginning of Aspects of Love. It is gone seven o'clock, um, but these things notoriously do not start on time. And there is a, a bit of a, a crowd in the stalls bar trying to get wine, as was I, but I eventually gave up because we had to get to our seats. Okie dokie, it is very busy down here because it's press night, but we do have this Aspects of Love souvenirs booth. You can see two different t-shirt designs, one in black and one in white. Over there, we have a tote. An Aspects of Love tote. Who doesn't want that for Christmas? We have a bottle, we have a mug, we have key rings and fridge magnets. I do have a new fridge, but I don't believe it's magnetic. Uh, and you can see them both here with prices as well. I'm kind of tempted by that white t-shirt just because I think it's a really cute pattern. And I like white and pink and it says love on it. Maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I will.
doing my good hey hello uh, we are back again this morning in oxford yes for day two of beam musical yes. theater conference new british musical theater conference very excited i'm dressed slightly more casually today because uh, i'm not speaking on a panel basically so i'm not overdoing it with the uh, professional attire but still looking smart still musical theater ready as we always are to be honest yesterday was an interesting day because you spend all day seeing exciting like early development new musicals like brand new like energizing exciting and then you go and see a revival of something from the 90s that like doesn't necessarily really make a good argument for why it's being revived by like the single most prolific musical theatre composer in the country, Andrew Weber. So it was an interesting, an interesting day of duality, I will say. Uh, but we left half an hour later this morning and got here 20 minutes earlier. Make that make sense? I don't know. So we're sauntering over to the Oxford Playhouse to go enjoy some more beam. I'm excited for the lunches again. Are you going to get the same salad or a different salad? I don't know. <gasps> I might get the same salad. It was really good. Or I might switch it up. I don't know. I'll see how I feel in the moment. But there are many bananas ahead of me today. That's all I know. Okay, so <laughs> we're so early, in fact, um, that we we've kind of, we're like ready to rope drop beam, which is a theme park reference for any theme park lovers watching this video. But literally too early for registrations. And while I am Mickey J. Boucher, I don't know who this man is because. Um, We've managed to, between us, we've managed to lose Aaron's lanyard. I don't know how that happened. Um, but we're having a stroll around Oxford while we wait for Beam to start. And I've bought yet another pair of uh, little earphones because I want to edit on the train and I'm constantly forgetting headphones every time. So we've been in Oxford Playhouse for Beam, but there is another theatre in Oxford. This is the new theatre, new at the time, I'm assuming, but not currently. Um, and you can see what's going to be on here over there. There's no big tour in at the moment. This is an ATG venue, I believe. I just walked into a bollard. <laughs> that one. My morning's not going well. Oxford architecture characterized by a lot of these very old buildings. And this one is a particularly old looking building. You can see just sort of historic streets of Oxford. Oxford, of course, world famous for its university, so there are colleges everywhere. Trinity College is over that way. This is the Church of St. Mary Magdalene, so I think Magdalen College. Maybe that one's Magdalen College? I don't know. I don't remember. I have been here before. Um, oh, big thing randomly. Yeah. Um, if you're in London and you follow the restrictions of going to Leon, mm -hmm. the quick food, get an account and use the code. Oh yeah, Aaron's just grabbed a Leon breakfast and spent how little? Three pounds. Three pounds. So like literally breakfast meal yeah. and extra bits Yeah. and three pounds. Yeah, and we forget to use the points or accumulate points half the time. Mm. But that's that's how much we go to Leon. Because it's easier if they have the machines because then you just type it in. Yeah. But even then, I, I forgot for ages, but now I'm like fully in that hype of using it. There you go. There you go. And here we are once again approaching the Oxford Playhouse for day two of Beam and some more new musical theatre in Oxford. Oh my god, hey! Ah, and once again, we have schlepped it down from Oxford to London. These have been two crazy travel days. Yeah. I haven't even really stopped to think about it. We've just done a massive triangle of train travel. That was fun to say. Uh, around the country, two days in a row. Uh, but we are down in London this evening. We took the, exactly the same train down. The train that was way too hot yesterday. Uh, it was cold today. I got chilly. So clearly they heard my note and they took my feedback, which is a critic. You know, you, you, you just have to appreciate when that happens. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but... We are here in London's West End to see what, Aaron James? Rose. At the... Ambassador's Theatre. Starring... Maureen Lipton. Yeah, well done. Um, we're here to see... Oh, and it's here. There you go. I forgot that that's where that came yeah. out. There you go. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky rear approach to the Ambassador's Theatre. Uh, but we'll go around the front so I can show you the, the front of houseage and the posterage. Uh, for Rose at the Ambassador's Theatre. We've been here a lot recently because they've had um, a decent turnover of shows doing little limited runs, which is fun. Uh, it's a nice smaller West End theatre, so it gives uh, these shows a chance to play a West End run. Always fun, and fun for us as well. 
pay no attention to Leslie Joseph going inside, but we have, there you go here, Maureen Lippman, Rose at the Ambassador's Theatre, a different look for this theatre than the last couple of shows that have been here. Very blue, many stars. It's already had a reasonably acclaimed uh, pre-West End run at the Park Theatre, hence all of the five-star reviews. It could already boast just above Maureen Lippman's head. There you go. So this is really just a victory lap for the show now, but my first time seeing it, so excited. It's always nice to see something pre-acclaimed. Okie dokie, we are inside and we are here once again in the Ambassadors Theatre, the recently renovated Ambassadors Theatre, and we are in the front row of the circle today. There you go, Aaron taking the all-important program shot. Let me do some cinematography. Pan, 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 pan. That's it. Beautiful. Uh, that's our view of the stage. Uh, obviously unobstructed because we're in the front row of the circle. Um, I'm in A7 right now in the circle of the Ambassador's Theatre. This is what I can see of the stage. I don't know much about this play, it must be said. So I'm excited and intrigued. There is a bottle of water on stage because this is a one person performance that's two and a half hours long so hydration is key people i will also say if you're sat on the front row um, as is the case with most theaters do not place anything on the ledge do not put your coats over do not try and put a drink on it because first of all it's slanted so that's going to fall uh, and second of all if it does fall forwards uh, you may concuss a member of the audience in the stalls and we don't want that for a similar reason they ask if you are drinking a beverage in this row that you make sure it is in a plastic rather than glass because they do not permit glass in the front row of the circle there you go some pre-warning for you there ahead of your potential visit Oh my god, hey, it's me from the present day because I wasn't planning on vlogging the day that you're about to see. I didn't have my camera with me for reasons that will become clear. But I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of it and it was a little novel thing that we were doing. So this was not a show necessarily, but we were in a theater because Aaron and I and some of our friends got tickets, got free admission tickets to be in the audience for the taping of Hannah Waddingham's Christmas special at the London Coliseum. This is going to go out later this year on Apple TV+, Plus, presumably around Christmas time, and there's not much we can tell you about it. We certainly couldn't show you any of it, but here is what happened on the day. Christmas! We're ready for Christmas! We're heading back on a Waddingham. We are! We are going to the Coliseum Theatre. See, Leah's here. Sean's here. Everybody's here. Um, we're going, here. Rob's here, we're going to the Coliseum Theatre to see Hannah Waddingham's Home for Christmas uh, Christmas special. Uh, for Apple TV, and we're going to the taping, but it's uh, it's May is the issue here. The principal issue here is that it's May, uh, so we're dressed for Christmas and have been all day. And it's an uncharacteristically warm and sunny day in London today. It's never normally this nice, and today it is. While well, we are dressed smartly for Christmas, so trying to get into a Christmas spirit. Is it working? I don't know. Who's to say? But for Hannah Waddingham will make anything happen, honestly. London Coliseum, home of the English National Opera, and adorably, they've actually put up Hannah Waddingham Home for Christmas signs. There is an enormous line of people. We only just got our tickets today because this was very oversubscribed, as they tend to do sometimes with TV audiences, I'm told. Uh, but we have tickets, and we are on our way in. Excited! So this was free. Uh, we got them via Applause Store, was the website. Uh, basically found out on social media that this was happening and booked it like a mad person. Um, and then turned up today at like just before two o'clock. Earlier than we were expecting to do. Yeah, and I think moments after us they ran out of allocation, like hours before they were meant to. It was super oversubscribed, but we got tickets. And like, this is my version of getting Beyonce tickets. I'm so excited. I'm fairly certainly gonna make us turn our phones off when we go in. Obviously you're sitting this on my phone and not my vlogging camera, because I thought that's a bad idea to try and bring yeah, a vlogging camera to a TV totally. taping. <laughs> uh, so no, no Christmas spoilers for you, but uh, the fact that they've uh, put the signage on the front of the theatre makes me think they're going to do establishing shots. So if you see this at Christmas, and you see Sheridan Smith's Shirley Valentine across the street, yeah. know that it was not December, that was the summer. So there you go, we're going to go inside now for Hannah Waddingham at Christmas in May.
Oh my god, hey, it's me again. This one I have no excuse for. I just didn't say oh my god, hey, at the start of this when I just started filming. It's because it was a whole little press trip with a bunch of critics, and often, you know, we're, we're very antisocial creatures. We'll turn up separately to the theatre and we'll get our tickets and we'll go and hide in different corners of the bar. But this one, because it's like a particular location, it was the Millet Sonning to go and see Gypsy. I was reviewing for Broadway World. My review, I believe, is already out and you can already go and read it. If not, it will be out soon. Um, but I was, I was chatting with critics I don't get to talk to very often and some new critics I haven't met before and some early career critics, which is my favourite thing, my favourite kind of person to talk to. So, um, yeah, didn't do my best vlogging on this occasion, but here it is. Here is my day at the Millet Sonning to see Gypsy. Here we are, this is the Thames, if you can believe it, and this is the mill at Sonning, with its lovely new awning here. The mill, we're gonna go inside. Got these lovely chandeliers in the front here, and here you can see what's on. Gypsy, a musical fable. We're outside the back, set on the river, and I do this every time, like a sort of a low budget paparazzo, but that one's George Clooney's house, because we're on his private island, you see. He's not here currently, but you never know. Perhaps he's a Sondheim fan. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Here we are. Aaron, you look yeah, biblical in the light there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh, Aaron is glowing with yeah. summer. There you go. Oh, I can't. You lean into me. It's a lovely evening. Ah, there we are. Actually, we have our white wine. Yes. We're staring at the riverside. We are. We are admiring the riverside. And any moment now, we'll be going upstairs to get our food. Because this is not just a theatre. Oh no. This is dinner theatre in the sense that you eat and then you see a show. Uh, so we're going to go enjoy a buffet. A lovely buffet um, that I remember very fondly from my last few visits. And I'm looking forward to again. I am also excited for the show, but like equally excited i would say and That's i will be reviewing event. both for you this evening you will get theater review and also buffet review because that's let's be honest that's what really matters that's the content we came here for here is today's menu at the millet sonning buffet particularly interested in the beef shin and ale pie and the carrots i love a carrot very excited for this and here it is. I have been to the buffet and I got just about everything. I didn't grab the trout. Uh, I have tried it before, but I'm not a not a big fish fan. Um, but look at this. We have all sorts of exciting things. We have pork. We have a roast on today. We have uh, potatoes. We have many carrots. Love a carrot. We have a beef shin and ale pie situation. I'm very excited for all of this. And I'll be bringing you my thoughts afterwards. And here is the dessert. I've opted for the bread and butter pudding. I've had it before. And I've gone for ice cream. It does look delicious. I'm very excited about it. There you go. And here we are in the auditorium at the mill at Sonning. This is our view of the stage. I'm in D23 or 24. This is the program for Gypsy. And this is the stage. They have extended the stage for this production. Very excited to see how this is utilized. Very ready for the show. It's me again, and I didn't bring you the food review I was promising, but honestly, the food is always great at Sonning. That bread and butter pudding, never on a menu would I order that over something like chocolatey or like something a little bit more obvious, but it's so good. I think someone, I think it was Paul Vale, the critic Paul Vale, um, suggested I have that once the first time I was at the mill at Sonning and I it's the best it's so so good so that is my recommendation if you're going to Sonning get the bread and butter pudding uh, but everything was as delicious as you would expect and I like that it was you know a little bit indulgent but still like hearty and it feels home cooked which is I think what's nice it's just like rustic and countryside vibes it's a great way to spend a weekend cannot recommend the whole experience and the show enough Oh my god, hey! Hello. We are in London today yes. on a slightly fraught travel day. We have just fought our way in, uh, but that's nothing compared to the journey we're going to have to make back later. But it's fine, it's all good. The things we do for theatre. Um, so, uh, it's windy. Yeah. It's very windy. Yeah. And that's been, that's been the weather forecast with us. We, uh, so we already had a press night booked in for this evening. We're going to go and see The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, a new musical at Southwark Playhouse Elephant. Uh, but when we were at Beam last week, 
seeing many previews of many new musicals, we were invited to a sort of a new musical workshop presentation of a show called Chasing Icarus. So you may recognise our surroundings now. We're in Victoria and we are about to be at the other palace to go and see a workshop presentation of Chasing Icarus. I'm excited. I know very little about this show, yeah. uh, but sometimes that leads to some of the most exciting theatrical discoveries. So we will tell you a little bit about it. It's not going to be a full review because it's just a presentation, but we will let you know what the vibes are like. Here it is, the other palace. We've been here a few times recently, never to see Heathers, just consistently here for other reasons. At some point we'll come back and see Heathers. Uh, but for today, we're here for another new musical. Oh my God, hey, we're walking uh, through London towards the river from the other palace, where we just saw the workshop presentation of Chasing Icarus. I'll tell you more about it in a second, but we had to stop off because uh, I was so intrigued by these cookies and baked goods that I saw in this window here. Let me tell you more about this. So we are in the shadows of Buckingham Palace right now, and this is called Royal Artisan. And look at some of the stuff in this window here. My goodness, my goodness. I have a cheese and chorizo thing. I got the last one. It was over there, but I'll tell you how tasty it was and you can eat vicariously through me. And then it was these that grabbed me. I love a cookie, as we know. Look how thick. This is such a funny shape. Very intrigued by these. Here it is. Um, chorizo and cheese bready situation. It's very nice. Mm. Very good. So this is somewhere we literally never walk. I couldn't even tell you the last time I was here. This is Westminster Abbey, everybody. Big old famous church. Um, and we are near government as well. You can see Big Ben, big old famous clock, hiding behind this tree. Oh, and you can hear it. What timing. You're showing the Elizabeth Tower. I am, yes. Big, Big Ben is actually the bell. the bell itself. I've seen Hunchback. I know they have names. I know what's up. The cookie. I've eaten most of. Um, somewhere between a cookie and a cake uh, in red velvet, which is lovely. It has like currants in it, which is nice. But it is a little bit dry, a little bit chewy. It's not my favourite cookie I've ever had. It sort of captures neither the best thing about cookies nor the best thing about cakes. But it is a fascinating hybrid for the baked good enthusiast, as I am. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, we literally never walk this way. People are queuing for these telephone boxes to take photos with these telephone boxes because you have Big Ben and House of Parliament in the background. Did not know that that was a thing that happened, that people actually queued up for telephone boxes. I guess you never really participate in the touristy things in your own city. But literally didn't know people even did that. Crossing Westminster Bridge, remembering why we don't cross Westminster Bridge very often. Big clock. So we have walked over to the National Theatre where we have outdoor stuff happening again at this time of year. We have some Portuguese sandos. We have arepas and cachapas. I love an arepa. We have rice bowls and bao. And to my left there is, I assume it's noodles, but it's, it's called Sen Nudes. Um, and I'm hoping that we don't linger too much on the very provocative t-shirt that you can also get there. But we're going to head to the National Theatre to get a little bit of work done. I need to finish writing up a review of what I saw last night. Aaron, who was previously sat in blinding light, who is now seen in relative shadow. Oh, uh, there you are. Uh, has just had, do you have a wrapper? No, the other one. Uh, oh, you had the other one? Cachapas? Yes, the cachapas. It's so good. It's like a, pan it's like a, a fluffy pancake. Oh, nice! And all gluten-free by design. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Love that for you. Happy boy. Okie dokie. What is my hair doing today? This is this is wild. What's going on? This is called uh, no hairspray. This is what's happening right now. I'm being I'm being my authentic self today. Um, and Aaron's got a backwards flat cap on. I forgot it was backwards at the minute. <laughs> I assume you did it deliberately. Did you accidentally put it on backwards or did you just forget No, I just put it on backwards for a bit, just like, oh, let's, let's do it for a bit. And then I've now remembered that it's backwards and I'm like, I can't see what it looks like. It's because we've both been I can't sat... even see what it looks like now because I'm so far away. <laughs> it's because we've both been sat working for an hour and this is what it does to our brains. Um, huh. But we're walking over now to Mercato Metropolitano, yeah. which is our go-to pre-Southwark Playhouse spot. Now, if you cast your minds back 
Uh, I recently took you to Southwark Playhouse Borough for the press night of how to succeed in business without really trying. And we wanted to get ice cream after the show and we couldn't because it ran late and the Carter Metropolitano closed. So today we're going to get dinner there and we're going to get ice cream before the show because we're going to the other Southwark Playhouse which is nearby but a different venue, Southwark Playhouse Elephant, which I don't think I've shown you before. So you're going to see a brand new off West End venue today. It's an exciting one. It's a lovely little space and they are doing some exciting shows. Yeah. So uh, very excited for that, but also very excited for our ice cream. We shan't lie. It is warm today in the sun and then you go in the shade and I'm quite chilly. And yeah, and my outfit's all over the place as well because this is like thick jacket, but then the shirt is light and breezy because it's got holes in. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I am today. All over the place. Oh, the market's on. Oh yeah, the market's on. Is it the weekend? It's oh, it's a Friday. Friday, that's probably why. There you go. The market outside the South Bank Centre. I love this market. Um, but this, uh, but we already have food plans. I know. Devastating. Devastating. I'm, I'm kind of sad that I got that cookie because it was just fine. It was okay. It was novel. But a part of me knew looking at it that like it wasn't going to be like cookie consistency because how could it be in that kind of a cylindrical shape? How was it ever going to work? I don't know. I think they flew too close to the sun when designing that cookie. Not unlike the story of Icarus, seamless transition. I didn't tell you about the new musical workshop we saw earlier. Uh, so it's called Chasing Icarus. We're going to cross some roads and then I'm going to tell you more about it. Bear with me. Passing in front of the Old Vic Theatre on our way. Uh, where Groundhog Day is currently playing. It hasn't yet opened, it's in previews. I'm hearing great things. As I did when it was originally here. And I didn't go and see it because I am foolish. But I'll be seeing it this time. We're going to be going shortly after press night to review. And I'm very excited. I like posting pictures of shows and theatre facades and programmes on my Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram if you don't already. If not, why not? And I'm, I'm not seeing Groundhog Day today. Not for like over a week, but I'm going to take take the photo now in advance because it's a nice day and I'm here and I like to have backups. I did this with Sylvia as well. I didn't get a good shot on press night but I got a good one afterwards so that's the one I posted. Pays to be prepared. We got the shot. And now I'm passing the Young Vic. Just a little down from the Old Vic. There it is. It's too long since we've been to the Young Vic. We were here last summer for Oklahoma. Uh, and then we were meant to be coming from Mandela at Christmas, but the performance was sadly cancelled. They're still advertising The Second Woman, starring Ruth Wilson, although that is not currently playing. You'll notice there's a queue on the ground here. Uh, so I didn't go and see this, but this was Ruth Wilson uh, performing the same scene over and over again for 24 consecutive hours. So there was a queue outside as people waited to get in. The British public love a queue and Ruth Wilson loves doing crazy things on stage. Fun fact, opposite the Young Vic is another theatre that people don't know exists. Right there is the Calder Bookshop and Theatre, which is a theatre bookshop that sells play scripts and all of that. And then at the back they have a little black box theatre. I'm doing a slow zoom. There they you go. They, they do have, have a cat. cat. Yes. They have a theatre cat. They do. Thank you, Aaron James. You're welcome. Okay, so, Chasing Icarus, uh, the workshop presentation, new musical that we saw this afternoon at the Other Palace. It described itself as Hedvig and the Angry Inch meets Amadeus, and I can absolutely get why. It did this thing kind of like Hamilton has done, kind of like Six has done, where we're looking at a period of history, we're looking at a period story, and we are sort of infusing it with a modern sensibility, or re-examining it through uh, the lens of an underrepresented group perhaps in this instance uh, it was about these uh, sort of competitive uh, opera singers and telling the story of castrati using a cast of non-binary and trans inclusive performers uh, which i thought was lovely and a reminder that we have exceptional non-binary and trans talent in the uk performers like b terry performers like joni Aiton kent everyone in the cast so fantastic um, and yeah some really talented performers there was some great music dare i say it we got Eurovision vibes yes. on a couple of yeah, moments. I mean, when you think like melodrama and like kind of an operatic style and like an operatic scale 
but with a more contemporary sound, I think Eurovision kind of the perfect fit for that. We saw the first act and we saw a decent amount of material. There were some really great songs, there were some really funny moments, uh, and it's a really interesting story, one that I think will really resonate with the queer community. It's very epic and dramatic, and I'm excited to see how it evolves and how it continues. And I'll be sure to let you know uh, if the opportunity arises for you to go and see Chasing Icarus for yourselves. Welcome to Southwark. Stop for the pigs, stay for the classic movie musical references painted on the grates. Please sir, may I have some more? Okie dokie, we're in Makata Metropolitano and I've got a Korean corn dog with ketchup, honey mustard, parmesan flakes. I've been looking at these every time I've come and I haven't had one yet and today is the day that I do. Marguerite. Review pending. Look at this goodness. Oh my god, hey! Oh my god, hey! Dinner! Done! Makata Metropolitano. Lovely. What did you eat? I didn't remember you eating. I had a margarita pizza. You did! You very did. did! You did! I have no idea what my hair's doing, still. <laughs> it's been a weird hair day, you guys. I've, I've been humbled today. <laughs> like my hair. Korean hot dog. So good. So, so good. Delicious and soft and juicy. It was kind of like an arepa. Like around a hot dog. And it was, it was nice. It was nice, it was a taste sensation. Had sangria. <laughs> but, uh, what's sangria? <laughs> bit of red wine, bit of fizzy pop. <laughs> Even though we're not seeing Operation Mincemeat. Um, but still had to enjoy the sangria because it's a sunny day and British people can only drink one of two things <laughs> on a sunny day. It is sangria or... Alcohol. Just <laughs> in general. I was going to say Pims, but <laughs> alcohol for sure. And it's been that kind of a week. Yeah. Um, but yes, and we had the ice cream. Erin and I had La Dolce Vita. Mwah. So good. <clears throat> I can have a vat of it. Yeah, mint chocolate chip. I don't know how I feel about a mint chocolate chip. I know it's a, it's a, you know, it's a more mighty thing, but... It just feels like I'm eating ice cream and I've recently brushed my teeth. Yeah, I know people say that, it's like, it's toothpaste, but like, mm, refreshing. I'm not a, I'm not a minty person. <laughs> what is going on with my hair? I'm very distracted by my hair. It's, it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. But we are walking over uh, from one Southwark Playhouse, because Makata Metropolitano is opposite Southwark Playhouse Borough. So we're walking from one Southwark Playhouse to another. We're heading to Southwark Playhouse Elephant. Elephant. Which I will show you shortly. Yeah, let's not get rid of her in the prison. Let's not. <laughs> there it is. This is a very shaky camera because I'm walking towards the venue because we're a little bit later than we'd like to be. But there it is. So the Clayhouse Elephant. You really got to look for it because it's a slightly unassuming building. I mean, it's a, it's a skyscraper, but unless you knew it was there, I'm not sure you'd spot it. They need like a giant elephant. <laughs> I think. I think that would help. Okay, I don't want to get my camera out because I think it's about to start, but this is my view of the set. We've got all sorts of fishing apparatus. Oh, literally, I think it is starting. This is my view of the set. I'm in E24, I think, or 23. Show's about to start. Thank you so much for watching this week's Oh My God Hey. I hope that you have enjoyed watching as much as we enjoyed living it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're going to do what we normally do, which is we're going to do like highlight and low point of the week. Oh, see, I feel like we're both going to say exactly the same thing for the highlight. <gasps> Are we? What's yours? The Queen. Oh, yeah. I mean, how can you get better or higher than Hannah Waddingham? Yeah. Spending Christmas with you and our friends and Hannah Waddingham in May. <laughs> it was such a nice day as well because we kind of got to have like a group adventure. We got, got the tickets and we went yeah. to the park and like went and kind of had food together. Got to go to Cold, Cold Stone Creamery, which was so good. And then like experience what filming's like for that kind of thing and get to see Hannah perform because it's been such a long time yeah, and since being able to see her f just go for light and see some some of her, her friends that appear that we're not going to spoil. No, no spoilers. No spoilers from us. But also then watching the end of Ted Lasso this week just made it even more like... Big fans. It was like big full circle. Big fans. Hannah Waddingham was one of the first musical theatre performers um, that I really fell in love with and I saw everything she did while she was here doing shows in the West End before she ascended to Hollywood, rightfully so, the star that she is. Um, but this was kind of like the perfect Hannah Waddingham concert yeah. because you saw her doing all the amazing things that she does and getting to display her full range of talents 
but also when in between takes uh, she would just talk to us and it was like the like the mask of it all was yeah. coming down and she was just so down to earth and casual and hilarious and charming and and honest I just want her to be announced for a show soon yeah yeah we need a big really big star right vehicle now. for Hannah Waddingham yeah she deserves it. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the highlight. Yeah. That was the highlight. The low point. I was disappointed by those cookies. The cylindrical ones. I'm glad I couldn't have them. Yeah. Yeah, you were spared that one by gluten. Um, oh no, oh no. Train strikes again. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's this weird thing of being like... Power, power to the power workers. To, power to like the reasons and why. But it's... It's just become a thing that's very difficult. We need the bosses to come to the table because we just need it to be solved now. Because this yeah. is it's really difficult. We will it's always we really will always difficult. head into town anyway for shows. We don't like to cancel. No. We don't like to mess people around once we've got things booked in, and we don't want to miss out on seeing shows no. and these opportunities. Um, <laughs> we have to. There's been some exciting ways of getting back. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah. I realise just how much hair I now have. I was about to say, you look like an Osman today. Or a Bieber. Is what's happening. Like, I would have as much Bieber. if I wasn't, like, curling it up around my head. It's weird, because then looking at it right now, I'm like, oh, that's a nice lump. I like how it's landing. And then later on in the day, I'm like, oh, there's so much hair. It's and it's so warm, warm as well, yeah. It's very warm. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, oh, oh. Emojis. <gasps> oh, what's the emoji? So, I, there's loads of shows that are really easy to do emojis for, like yeah. Rose, yeah. like, you could do fun things with Benjamin Button or Time Travelers Why, because they both are like, got clock themes, uh -huh. but I want to go a bit more fun. <gasps> I want everybody to create their own emoji themes of how they would describe Hannah Waddingham via emojis. Emojis inspired you, by Hannah Waddingham. Do you there do you the go. role she's done? Do you do a way for a link to Ted Lasso? We'll, we'll let you express yourselves artistically. Yeah, there you go. Let's have some fun. Oh, that's sweet. I like that. Okay. Emojis this week inspired by Hannah Waddingham and what she means to you. Answers yeah. on a postcard, please. And I feel like I'm going to mark them all later as this bring out the teacher in me. <laughs> again but thank you so much for watching this week's oh my god hey i hope that you have enjoyed sharing these stagey adventures with us and we will see you again for next week's oh my god hey i hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have, have a, a stagey, stagey day for 10 more seconds i'm mickey joe theater oh my god hey thanks for watching have a stagey day subscribe <laughs>